How's it going, Teal Boys? It is week eight. Uh, we get to go on the road once again, but this time just facing Kentucky. Uh, unfortunately for Kentucky, they're not that great. A B plus, better than maybe some would expect, but uh, I don't expect this to be the biggest challenge. We outclass them in every category except for the pass defense and the turnover differential. Now, we are favored to win this game, thankfully. And let's see, who have they played this year? They lost to Arkansas. They got beat badly there. We're able to beat Louisville. Uh, they lost to Ole Miss, Florida, beat South Carolina in overtime, and then beat Mizzou, surprisingly. Uh, the, the ranked Mizzou that we're hoping continues to win, but they just uh, screwed that one up. We need them to be ranked when we play them at home because we're sending a bunch of recruits. Currently, we're looking solid. Uh, I'll expect a win up until the Tennessee game, and that one's going to be a tough one. Tennessee sitting at number four in the country right now, and we'll have to go on the road. So hopefully we can take out the volunteers there, but... Uh, that's not the game that matters. Top 25 polls. We only have, I believe, two ranked games this week. Kansas plays Oklahoma. That's 5-15. and 15, And then we've got Purdue and Nebraska playing in the Big Ten. Other than that, uh, tune-up games for the rest of the top 25. And uh, who knows? Maybe we can see some crazy upsets. Maybe Iowa State can pull off a shocker against Texas. I won't hold my breath on that one, but I can hope for the best. And then hopefully... In the Heisman watch here, Radon and Marquise can just do enough to stay here up at the top two spots for the award. It would be phenomenal if one of these guys could win it, but uh, we need to make sure that we are just winning games first. We can't put them first. Uh, Recruiting-wise, we don't have a lot of work to do. Just two visits that we need to schedule. Uh, and they're for pretty mediocre players. So what we're going to be doing is just continuing to send them to the uh, Mizu game. This will allow us to hopefully start building more and more uh, complimentary visits. And also give us that extra XP for scheduling visits versus a top 25 team. At least for now. Uh, nothing else really to talk about recruiting wise. It's just kind of slow battles and trying to convince players to come play for us. So... Let's go ahead and just get this one on. Uh, 88 overall for Kentucky with a 90 offense and an 88 defense. Uh, let's just go all white this time around. And for Kentucky, uh, well, they have some decent options. I like the all blue look. Maybe something with the all black. What else do we have? There's a lot of alternates for this Kentucky team. What if we look at like all blue, but with the white chrome helmet? Yeah, let's do that. Why not? It's something a little bit different, and we can get this one underway. So again, Kentucky, uh, very mediocre offense. They've been passing the ball well, but that's about it. And defensively, it's been a complete struggle for them. We've done all right. Kind of the opposite. Good offense, uh, but struggling to run with a, just a pretty solid defense, although we've been terrible at stopping the pass this year. They've got a guy visiting in their top players, a center, a left guard, and a wide receiver. High 90s down into the low 90s and the 80s overall. Our top players, uh, believe it or not, still very good. Injury-wise, we are fine, but they have a right end and a running back out. One week each, a forearm fracture and an ACL sprain. Uh, those guys are going to be glad to be done with those injuries, but unfortunately, they won't be able to play in this game. Ooh, a nice sunny day here at Kroger Field as we will face Kentucky and see what we can do to try to stay undefeated on the season. Tails fails us this time. I assume that means we have. We will be receiving the ball. Uh, just a small little breeze today. And the hope is that we can start this one strong. Maybe not a, a kick return necessarily. But I'm looking for a big play from the offense. Marquise Jackson. Oh, my gosh. Took a big shot there after trying to juke a man out. But got us decent field position. Typically this season, I think we've opened it up with a run. This time, we're going to go with a play action. Fake it to the running back. And outside the pocket, Y is wide open. And JJ is going to hold on to that one. Just like that, we're near midfield. Mike Fontaine back in the lineup on this game after being benched in the middle of the last game with his two fumbles. So we'll see if he's, you know, cured the, the butterfingers. If not, he could be sitting on the bench for a little bit longer. Let's bring some trickeration of Flea Flicker on second and six from about midfield. 
Trying to get the pass off. We'll find Marquise, and he's just going to get shoved out of bounds. A lot of work there to get 12 yards, but always fun to mix those in. And I'd like to try a tunnel screen. We don't do this often, so we'll see if it works. Waiting. We find Marquise. He's just going to get a yard. Uh, some of those plays I haven't really run before, so I don't know how to do them properly, and I think we messed that one up. Radon coming into this game as the fifth highest passer in the country so far this season. And my goodness, these guys really looking like they want to bring some pressure. Can we burn them? Oh, that's going to be picked off. I don't know. That's not the button I wanted to throw to. Uh, we gave it to Bo Lam and it's, oh, it's intercepted. We forced the fumble and it just goes out of bounds at JJ Barr's feet. I wanted to throw it to like Jonathan Williams, but I just hit the wrong button. Uh, that one was never going to be completed. That is very frustrating. Oh, I just, I can't stop making mistakes this season. Six interceptions now on the year four right on it. Because we're going to bring some pressure and they're going to run and they're just going to run through the pressure and get five yards. Dan Outlaw, the running back for the Wildcats today. Does a good job on first down on this one. Quarterback, yeah, going to get sacked. Didn't need to bring two guys. We managed to bring him down. This is Don Riley stepping up to get the hit on the QB. It drops him for a loss of five and brings up this third and ten. So a chance, I guess, now for our defense to get off the field. We'll see how our coverage is going to be, and it won't matter. Scott Galloway had his man open. Short of the line to gain, but threw it out of bounds. So seems like no harm comes from the interception, uh, other than just maybe slowing down. Our chance to put up points on the board first. A very returnable punt for Marquise Jackson. And we're going to kind of run into our own teammates and stumble into some defenders and only get nine yards there. I just got to try to make sure that I don't make some stupid mistakes on this drive. 3.31 left in the first quarter. We'll hand it off to Mike Fontaine. And the power back gets seven after just trucking his way through a defender. And we might be looking for him again on this second down. Uh, no, I don't like it. He might have been open if we tried to force it. We're going to wait. There it is. The patience. We find Marquise and he's gone. <laughs> Just had to wait for him to turn around. You know, I don't feel too bad doing that to the AI because that happens to me all the time. And uh, the patience pays off and we find the end zone. 7 nothing. Oh, well, Tennessee not going to be top four by the time we play them. South Carolina upsets them in a big way, 42 to 14. I'm sure Vols fans are not happy about that one. Rocky Top crumbling on the season as Kentucky just takes a touchback on this one. Kentucky opened up the last drive with a solid run. I'm honestly kind of expecting that again here. Uh, but no, it's going to be, well, yeah, it is a run. A designed quarterback draw, and it's going to work for 14. I'm impressed. Nice play call for him. It works out, and this time a run up the middle goes for nine. Kentucky just should run every play. They do come in with a decent rush offense. What can we do to stop him? Going to bring the pressure. Got to sell out to make sure that we don't give up the first down. And, well, the quarterback... Should have been dropped in the backfield. Got back to the line. And there's zero chance I'm allowing a run up the middle if we can help it. Third and one. Bringing the pressure. They're going to throw off their back foot. They have a man open. Spencer Stanley can't get the tackle on the first attempt. But has to come back and get Joe Neal on the second. It's another big gain. 22 yards that time as Kentucky is moving downfield very quickly on this drive. And that's going to be another man wide open. Kale Mackey got burned and it's now a first and goal. Back-to-back -back plays for over 20 yards for the Wildcats. Sees them now inside the 10-yard line. Kale Mackey trying to bring the blitz. I see guys open all over the field. This one at the back of the end zone, and Galloway just missed his receiver. I'm not certain if that man was going to be open enough to catch the ball had the pass been accurate, but I'm certainly not going to be upset that we didn't get a find out. This time, well, Galloway's not missing that time, and he finds Lester Allen in the corner of the end zone in Kentucky very quickly just tied this one up. All righty. I'm not a fan of the way the defense played there. We had our chance to get off the field a couple of times there, it felt like, but we just couldn't capitalize. Marquise is gone. No, maybe not. 81 is the speedster. And there it is. Okay. <laughs> well, 
We scored uh, pretty quick on our second drive. Kentucky won up us and scored even quicker. And then, well, we didn't even have to bring the offense out this time. Marquis Jackson, two touchdowns already in this first quarter alone. The returner of the year, unsurprisingly, takes one to the house. And now it's time for the defense to get back out there. Hopefully the two special teams plays. It's enough for them to catch a little bit of a break. And I'm going to start to bring constant blitzes. Just we're going to be changing them up a little bit. And they won't be quite as big. None of those big safety blitzes. We'll just try to rush five. This time a run towards the edge gets stopped. And on the run up the middle. Another blitz gets there. And again, just stopped at the line. So it's just like that. Third and ten and the chance to get off the field. I'm user in Wilson. Seeing if we can get some pressure on this quarterback. And we did force him to get rid of the ball and it's well short of the line to gain and when these teams are in the hurry up sometimes those drives can go lightning fast three plays in probably less than a minute and we're getting the ball back uh maybe a chance again for some more points on the return blocking is pretty solid if there's no penalties there's not a whole lot that marquis has to outrun and he's gonna get into the end zone on the punt return so just like that, Marquise trying to take over the top spot on the Heisman list. Three touchdowns in the first quarter. One through the air, one off of a kick, and one off of a punt. It feels kind of like it's been a while since uh, he's just absolutely taken over a game, but we might be seeing that right now. If he gets a chance to put up more points in this first half, uh, this could get really out of hand for Kentucky. We throw it out to the running back. I missed the second tackle after Don Riley had his first attempt shed. And once again, Kentucky getting a big play on the board. That one should have been stopped for a loss instead. It goes big, and this time we drop him in the backfield. So we're dying up the pressure to stop the run, and it's working right now. We kind of just have to hope that the uh, pass coverage holds up at this point. We're not great at stopping it so far this season. So they do run it on that second long. And I think we'll see one final play in this first quarter. They get it off just in time. It's a slip screen. I hope I don't get called for roughing the passer there. And it doesn't matter. They're getting the first down anyways. The screen worked beautifully. That's on me for not reacting to it. Uh, they're going to pick up a big gain and get the first down at the end of the quarter. But we have the 21-7 lead uh, really just at the hands of Marquise. I don't like that one bit. So we're going to have to deal with it. They're going to run on first down, and that's great stop. McBride got in there and broke it up, a loss of four. That play just completely represented the way that our defense has played this season, though. Give up big plays and then get big stops almost immediately after, and then give up another big play to, to negate the big stop. 17 yards. We are so incredibly inconsistent. And Kentucky moving downfield, throwing one up. It's Jenkins getting burned by TJ Corden. It's another big play. The Wildcats move inside of the 15-yard line. At the start of this quarter, first down, looking for something over the middle. They have it. We slow them down. Only temporarily here, though. We'll be looking to force them just to attempt the field goal at this point. Bring in pressure. No, it's a little screen. Spencer Stanley does get the tackle. That was kind of a weird one. The problem is that in the process of getting the tackle, he gave up six yards. So it's third and one from inside the five. Kentucky going to run the ball. Smith's there in the backfield. We jumped that snap absolutely perfectly and we'll force them to kick this field goal. Now, I got to say, I would probably go for this if I was Kentucky, but the Wildcats trying to make sure that they're getting points on all their possessions uh, as much as they can at least, and they settle for three. Gives us a 21 to 10 lead now, and a chance for us to extend it as Marquise will drop the kick in. Half the team's diving for it. I don't know why we can't just pick that one up and try to return it. Now we're inside the 10. The kick was so far. Uh, the kick was so short and so far to the left that Marquis had to run for like a mile to get there. Just wasn't able to get set. First and 10. We're going to look to pass. They're bringing pressure. I don't like it. Let's go for the safe throw. Stewart. Nice tap. <laughs> Sean Stewart just absolutely obliterated that man. Oh, I hope they don't send him to the hospital, Bill, because that might bankrupt him. 
We're out of danger immediately. We'll give Mike Fontaine the ball. Allow the running back to get the carry, and he's only going to get a yard there. Not the strongest run we've seen from him this game. We are set up on this second and nine, looking towards the air. And we're just going to dump it off. Give it to Mike Fontaine, and that time he at least does a good job of falling forward for four yards. So right on six of seven with an interception. We'll look to the air on this third down, trying to find something. A is open. Can Williams catch it and get north? He can. He stays inbounds. Jonathan gets us the first down. Let's throw in a read option here as we've crossed midfield. It's going to be handed off to Mike Fontaine, who has some fantastic blocking and is able to get nine yards up the middle. This is a game just full of offense at this point. Second one looking to throw. We'll go with the safe one. Bo Lamb. Open enough to catch it. No interception that time as we throw to him, and that's another 11 yards. And it truly is just defense optional at this point. 240 in the half. We'll run it up the middle. Mike Fontaine breaks a tackle and gets six more yards. Curious to see if we can catch them off guard with the play action. We're going to have to throw over the middle. Bo Lamb wide open on the late post. Oh, I was a little bit worried we weren't going to get the pass off or they were going to jump it, but... Made the right decision as we're getting hit. It's a beautiful ball by Radon. It's another touchdown with two minutes left in the half. 28 to 10 now. Kicking it away. Trying to stop these guys. With just those two minutes. They do have all their timeouts though. Unfortunately for us, Kentucky will get the ball to start the third quarter. So... Yeah, we really need to hold them at least to a field goal on this drive. They'll look to throw on this one, and that's going to be a wide open Montoya as he gets out of bounds with the first down. We're really seeming to struggle on pass coverage, man, this year. It's been bad. Uh, this one, saw it was coming. Couldn't fully commit to covering it, though. They pick up yards and have to take up their first time out. It doesn't seem like the man or the zone will work consistently for us, so... Try to switch between them, and that doesn't work perfectly either. And, you know, it just leads to bad defense. A run. Interestingly enough, on second and six, we're going to drop them inbounds and short of the line to gain, so the clock will burn. And we're not necessarily set on defense, but third and two will be in the zone, expecting them, honestly, to pass it. It's going to be a play action over the middle. We were there, just not quite enough to stop it, and Alvarez holds on through the contact. Wildcats get the clock to stop with the first down and then go in the hurry up here as they will throw over the middle and again tackle them so the clock is at least moving. Neither quarterback's really having a tough time today. <laughs> Both guys able to find their man at will and Don Riley gets the pick and he's going to have a head of steam. I don't know if it's this enough speed to take it to the house. 85 is chasing him down but no Don Riley will take it to the house. The pick six we tie up the turnover battle. And we increase our lead in the process. Galloway's third incompletion of the day is our first interception. And it that's not a guy I would expect to get the pick six. But Don just digging deep to find the speed to take it to the end zone. Absolutely beautiful. You love to see it. Now just a minute for Kentucky to work with. And they're the biggest deficit or a bigger deficit. So now just a minute nine to work with for Kentucky with two timeouts. And they are in a bigger deficit than they were previously as this one is a great throw. Jenkins unable to get there. They pick up another big one. Galloway showing no fear going back to the air after the interception. And on this one, another completion out towards the edge will stop the clock. This could be a risky one. Bringing the corner blitz on second and six. Because again, we'll expect them to be passing the ball. Can we get there and disrupt things? They look over the middle. They have one. John Taylor misses the tackle. They break a tackle and they pick up 13 yards and take their second time out. Well, let's go into the nickel for a little bit. See if getting an extra DB in here can help slow them down in the passing department. They will look to throw on first down. I've left my man open there, throwing it deep. This could be picked off, and Spencer Stanley drops the interception. Oh, that looked like it was a pass to him, but he can't come down with it. A pretty underthrown pass from Galloway there. I think he puts that back in the end zone. Only his guy can get to it. Unfortunately for him, it doesn't work out that way, and they're going to try it again, and this time it works. The ball is thrown far enough, and Joseph Thompson gets it 35 yards downfield. Galloway... 
Just needed that first attempt to kind of dial in the distance, I guess. Well, we have 42 seconds in all of our timeouts now to try and get something to work. Uh, I don't feel super confident, but you never know. Marquise with a terrible return. That was awkward. We don't need to panic on time, but we should be looking pretty far downfield. Although this time, yeah, that doesn't work. We're just going to take our first time out immediately. Threw it to Malcolm over the middle, hoping that he would get the first down and stop the clock, but he stopped just shy. And so we have to take the time out. And now it's second and inches and we're looking, we're looking. We're going to throw it up. Can Chad Bradshaw get there? We're lucky that one wasn't picked off. Didn't expect those two defenders to be able to get there in time. Just the team's second, third down of the game. We should be able to convert this, although they're bringing pressure. Well, let's just throw it to Marquise. It'll waste some time. And oh, I didn't get out of bounds. So we'll have to go in the hurry up with 21 seconds now. And we will be looking deep. Safety, not really in a good spot. This could be all Marquise on this one. And no, we're going to give a chance for Malcolm Williams. He's going to come down with it and get out of bounds. First and goal, 52 yards downfield. Well, with two timeouts to work with, we don't have to worry about passing it. So we're going to attempt to run. Mike Fontaine on first down, gets in. Oh no, it's JJ Barr. The fullback gets in. Perfect. 42 17, 10 seconds left. We might be able to cheese out a kick six. We know this kicker isn't very good. And I'm going to do it. Uh, I'm feeling like I just really want to blow this Kentucky team out. So we'll have Frederick attempt the onside kick. Also, there's always a chance we could recover one. But with nine seconds left, we'll see if we can kick the or force them to kick the long field goal. We just have to not give up the long bomb touchdown on this first down. Try to get them to where they think they need to throw it. And well, I don't think they're, <laughs> they're going to be kicking a field goal. They get sacked, take their time out. And with just five seconds left, I think we're going to see a Hail Mary here. So uh, as long as this doesn't turn into a touchdown, it's great news for us. They're looking deep and they get hit again. It's an incompletion for Galloway. And one second left, they'll get another chance. Third and long now. What can we do to stop it? Again, seeing the Hail Mary. Can the pressure get there in time? It doesn't necessarily seem like it. Ball's batted around and it will just hit the turf. So we get a deflection on the stats and lower his passing can, uh, percentage. Get a sack as well. So the uh, onside kick was worth it. And we go into the room, locker rooms. Goodness, up 42 to 17. It's been working pretty well. Uh, we have moved the ball well on offense, but unfortunately so have they. So... Adjustment wise, we just need to figure out how we can get the defense to slow them down. And uh, at that point, it should just be an easy victory. Although it kind of feels like we can just coast to the win at this point anyways. As we kick this one off, if you're enjoying the video, please right now scroll down quickly while they take this touch back and hit the like button. It helps out tremendously when you guys do like these videos. So uh, if that's something that you're interested in doing for the channel, you know, think about it. Kentucky has a good first down pass to start this third quarter. Gets five yards. We're going to keep bringing a little bit of pressure. I'm expecting them to, you know, go to the uh, to the ground with a run, but it's not happening. That time we almost get another sack. Well, we've got them into the third down situation. What can we do with it? Try not to give up a screen because we got burned by that earlier, but I'm expecting them to go to the air. Maybe it's a... Uh, a late draw? No. They're just going to throw in. Leon Sandcastle gets beat. There is a flag down, though. This could be coming back. Pass interference. Offensive pass interference. Who's it on? The wide receiver, TJ Gordon. We will accept that and force the third and long. Still third down. I got to say, I think it was a pretty fair penalty. This is the guy that it's on. He just runs downfield and starts blocking. Uh, I mean, you can't block 10 yards downfield, so... We made to get bailed out there. Unfortunately, we do still have to stop them now again. Third and 15. They're looking to the air. And one tackle's not complete. Kale Mackey's able to slow it down, though. And we do force the fourth and two. Realistically, in my mind, if Kentucky wanted to win this, they should go for this. Uh, but they're going to kick it away. And Marquise will get another chance to return a punch. He's already taken one to the house. And that was absolutely shanked. What on earth is that? Marquise having a hard time picking it up. That is the worst CPU punt I have ever seen. 
What the heck was that? I've been absolutely bamboozled. That was awesome. Oh, I love when stuff like that happens. Well, let's go with the play action. Looking for a bomb on first down. And we're going to throw it up. Oh, no. This is dangerously underthrown. Radon super lucky that that one's not picked off. Well, after that little mishap of a throw, let's just go ahead and run the ball on second down. I don't want to throw an interception and allow Kentucky to have a chance in this game. So we'll run it and we'll only get a yard. Two of two on third downs at this point. We have a long ways to go to pick this one up on third and nine. Look into the air. X is open. Chad Bradshaw has the first down and a solid chunk more. As we've now passed for 250 plus as a team. Radon having a good game passing so far. If you just take away that interception, it's world class. Mike gets a good carry, misses the first man and picks up five. I want to keep it on the ground here with a, another option. We haven't run this a whole lot this game. They forced Mike to keep it the first time. And it was the same thing. I was holding down A to give it to Fontaine, but Radon decided he wanted to lose some yards on the play, I guess. Mike had a ton of room to run. Very, very frustrating, and it brings up another third down for us. Something I certainly don't want to have to contend with as we will look to the air, and I'm throwing a tough one to Chad Bradshaw. Oh, my goodness. The third down king today. The diving one-handed grab allows us to keep this one alive. We don't deserve to be still on the field at this point. First down, let's run the ball. Again, blocking. Oh, very, very good for Mike Fontaine. And he's going to get 11 on that first down carry. We'll go ahead and give it to him again here as well on this first down. Up the middle, the blocking again, pretty phenomenal. Able to get him five. So we're moving the ball pretty well on both sides of the football at this point. And we're just going to keep running the ball. If they can't stop it. Oh my gosh, <laughs> why? <laughs> oh, why should we not run? Mike Fontaine with another fumble, and Kentucky recovers it. The only hope here is that we get the safety, and it turns into a big brain play to get more points. Expecting the run there, step back to pass. The quarterback has it batted away, and they're not out of danger yet. Uh, We didn't get to choose our play. Oh, no. I was trying to select the subs formation and oh that's really frustrating it just auto brought us out in the nickel three three five so instead of being at the goal line bringing pressure up the middle uh we allow them to get pick up some yards the defense thankfully will hold and we will force them to punt this one away now the question is can we block the punt i highly doubt it but we're gonna give it a shot they'll be kicking it from their own end zone with not a whole lot of time left, and ooh, we might have hit the punter. He shanks that one. <laughs> it goes out at like the 30. Thankfully, no penalty. I'm having a really hard time making my mind up on what plays I want to call, so I'm not sure if we get this one off. No delay a game. We're throwing the screen. Mike Fontaine. Got to trust him to hold on to the ball. So we'll continue to give him the football. Uh, but again, if he makes a mistake here, he might be in real hot water. It's second and four. We'll go with the fake handoff on the sweep. Give it to J.J. Barr. And the fullback with plenty of space is going to get us a first and goal. And now after trying to use the setup play there, we will go with the actual sweep. Giving it to Chad Bradshaw. He deserves a touchdown on the game. And he's going to get it easily. Just had to get a yard and he finds it without getting touched. So we will increase the lead. It's now 49 to 17. And I'm looking to get another stop uh, desperately. Also, I just want to see this punter shank some more attempts because this dude's bad. I don't think it's an exaggeration to say this might be the worst punter I've ever seen in this game. Like just terrible, terrible, terrible attempts. Uh, they're going to go with a little draw on first down. Great blocking as I'm just allowing the stiff arm cheese to happen and giving up 15 yards. Try to bring ourselves a little bit of pressure on first down here as they will step back to throw over the middle. And we get the big hit on TJ Gordon, but he holds on for four. Let's see what we can do in the zone on second and six. Although I kind of expect a handoff. And that's exactly what we're going to see. But Durham Finch gets in there. Drops him for a loss of three, and it's third and long. 
Well, this has been very solid so far. Can we get the stop? Will they get the playoff? The final play, I think, of the third quarter. They're going over the middle. That's on me. I should have been there. But we all know my user's atrocious. And I give up 20 yards as a result. Oh, I'm so bad at this game sometimes. Into the fourth quarter, we have this game wrapped up. It's just a question of how much are we going to win by at this point. 21 of 29 for this quarterback as he will look to throw. And somebody's open, of course. Wow, that's frustrating. I feel like we should have been able to be there, but he finds him for 21 more yards. We've allowed 280 passing so far as they march inside the red zone on this one. This is going to be a run. We were bringing the safety blitz, and they still managed to get four yards up the middle. What can we do now? Second and six, a man in motion. I'm expecting it to be handed off. It is, and we're there to swallow up that play in the backfield. They lose three on it. It'll be third and long again. Now, will we be able to uh, get off the field? On third down, looking to throw. Somebody's going to be up in there. Go corner of the end zone. Leon Sandcastle can't get there in time. I don't know how he's getting burned that badly. And Galloway finds a man front corner of the end zone. Just the tall receiver able to come down with it. Both feet in bounds and holds on through the contact. Oh, they're going with the onside kicks, apparently. They think that they can win, so we don't have our hands team out. We have to audible. I don't want to use the timeout. I don't really know why. It doesn't really matter to me if we have the timeouts. But we've got J.J. Barr in there. He's going to field it. And we're going to have the football. 5.08 left. We'll start this drive from the 50-yard line. And it's time for us to start burning the clock on this. Let's just get out of here before any problems. And before Mike Fontaine has a chance to fumble another ball. It is second and six as we will look to throw. I'm not done with the offense, but I am, you know, uh, still going to allow the clock to burn out. Right on having a good game. 16 of 19 through the air for 290 yards as Mike Fontaine will get hit at the line again. This fan has so many one-yard carries. Well, how about the play action? Second and nine. Marquise might be open. Uh, or maybe not. Can Williams come down with it? No. Yeah, that was a bad pass. Uh, I would run the ball here, but right now we're like perfect on third down attempts on the day. So we're going to try this one as much as we can. And JJ Barr's open. No, it's Mike Fontaine and somehow he comes down with it. And now we'll just start to run the ball. Burn this clock the rest of the way out. Radon can keep it and we'll slide down. No need to get him injured at the dying stages of this game. Second and four is this one will take us below two minutes. We're going to go with the jet sweep, but it's also going to go to JJ Barr. So kind of interesting that you give the jet sweep to your fullback. Works out relatively well, and he gets a couple of yards. So on third and two, we will try the option. Either looking for the touchdown or at least the first down on this one. And Radon keeping it and getting dragged down in the backfield. Nowhere to go with the football on that one. And that's our first uh, failed third down conversion. Well, we're going to go for it anyways. 40 seconds left. The first down would end it. Uh, touchdown. Well, it doesn't end the game, but it gives us more points than a field goal would have. And a tough throw to find the fullback as uh, Radon looks a little bit better now. Extra touchdown added on to his stats as the fans here in Kentucky are booing us. Ooh, unranked Alabama gets their third win of the season, upsetting number 12, Arkansas. So another big upset coming here out of the SEC as we will kick this one to Kentucky, and they're going to take, of course, another touchback. The final question in this game is going to be, what is Kentucky going to do with 38 seconds left in this one? Will they continue to throw? They will. So if we have a chance to get the ball back... Oh my gosh, my user's terrible. That should have been picked off. If we have a chance to get the ball back, uh, we're going to score. Or we're going to at least attempt to score. Because we don't condone teams passing in situations like that. Oh my gosh, Stern Finch just bopped that guy. On top of this, all Kentucky taking their timeouts with 30 seconds to go down as much as they are. That's just absurd. We don't, we don't allow that here. This one, a quarterback hit as he's throwing and Wilson's going to recover the fumble. It's kind of a shame he didn't stand up before picking the ball up. NFL, he probably gets up and takes it to the house, but we'll take that. that was, I don't know if he, he might have been throwing. Well, I'm not going to complain about it. 
Gives us another uh, turnover to even up the turnover battle. And now with 27 seconds, we can just go ahead and uh, pick up some more points, I think. Take our timeouts as well. When will these teams learn? You don't disrespect us like this. It's not going to end well for you. Stepping back, looking to throw again. And we've got a wide open JJ Bar. He's starting to pick up some yards. I'm going to make a tough throw potentially. Looking for Marquise Jackson in the end zone. Oh, not tough at all. He's completely wide open. <laughs> There's still time on the clock here. 12 seconds. The fans aren't happy with us, but screw them at this point. We're going to be leaving this team next year anyway, so they're going to be able to take their rage out on whoever the new coach is. <laughs> 11 seconds on the clock. And at this point, now it's a little bit disrespectful of us to continue to play like this. I can admit that. So... Kentucky finally not going to take the timeout, although they will go into the hurry up, surprisingly enough, but the clock finally hits that uh, triple zeros and we'll be able to take our win and hopefully not get, you know, beat up by the fans on the way out of the stadium. An easy win at the end of the day. Uh, defense was not that impressive, though. They come away with a couple of turnovers, but they gave up so many big plays. Uh, just can't be happy with it. Marquise Jackson is player of the game. Radon probably right up there with him. Both of them looking for that Heisman chase, and they both had good games for that. So how about that for a game? Uh, we kind of dominated, although it was all through the air on both sides. A combined 119 yards rushing between both teams, but then well over 600 through the air. Uh, two turnovers on each side. Really, it just came down to, let's see, special teams helped us get in front, and then our defense was just able to get stops, but also a little bit of bend but don't break from us as well to slow them down when they were having good drives. Offensively, we know Marquise is our player of the game, but David Wilson is our defensive player of the game. He had a couple of sacks, including that one at the end, the strip sack, where he forced the fumble and then managed to recover it. He's been very impressive Coming in and replacing Sidney McRae so far this season. Scott Galloway, pretty solid game. 24-32 for 319 yards and three touchdowns. But uh, the rest of his team just not helping him out enough. So we advance to 7-0 on the season. Looking real impressive. No matter what, a winning season at this point. Even if we were to lose out the rest of the way. But we'll go ahead and advance towards our bye in week 9 and see... Uh, what happened around the rest of the country? We already saw a couple of upsets, maybe a few more. Maybe Texas could have lost Iowa State and we could be number one. More recruits ready to visit. Uh, NCAA Player of the Week times two. Ooh, I like the sound of that. We still are number two in the country. Let's start with that. Did we have offensive and defensive? How? David Wilson with his two sacks, the forced fumble and the fumble recovery is enough to get him defensive player of the week. And Marquise Jackson with the 295 all-purpose yards and four total touchdowns gets him offensive player of the week. I got to imagine that's the same for the SEC. Uh, so what does that mean for our Heisman race? Does Marquise replace Radon? He does. And Radon drops down two spots to the number three as the, uh, the running back from South Carolina. Uh, had 113 yards and three touchdowns in that win over number four, Tennessee. So a big one there. Speaking of number four, Tennessee, how far did they drop after the loss? I got to imagine it's a solid amount. Just five. Their first loss drops them down to number nine. Uh, not as surprising as I would have expected. Number seven, Iowa lost to Illinois. We had Purdue, USC, and Kansas all losing, as well as Arkansas and Penn State. Uh, Missouri, Washington, Navy also all dropped out, so presumably upsets with those. So uh, a week in which only had two uh, games against ranked opponents saw a ton of ranked teams losing. Rutgers, believe it or not. Uh, what? They're four and three, ranked number 25 in the country, and the BCS poll is now out, and we are second in that as well. Two games played, or two more games played than Texas. Uh, our victories are looking a little bit more impressive, but... The Longhorns getting the benefit of the doubt right now. So we will deal with the bye week and our next matchup against a now ranked South Carolina uh, in the next episode. Unfortunately, that's going to have to do it for this one. Uh, so we will deal with the bye week and our next matchup against South Carolina in the next episode. 
if you enjoyed this one the, the beat down that we put on kentucky please feel free to hit the like button and if you want to see some more of that goodness uh please subscribe as well both of those things again do a tremendous amount in helping this channel grow and the bigger we grow the more we can do so always interested in that while you're down there doing those two things please also head to the description where you can find links to my twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster uh, as well as links to my twitter our community discord and as always the college football revamped mod if you're trying to get it for yourself but all that being said thank you guys so much for watching my name is goonmaster you guys are the teal boys and wherever you are have a good night or have a good morning and we'll see you later adios